Hey, welcome back for another episode of Porn Brain Rewire with me, Dr. Trish Lee. I am joined by the illustrious coach, Zach Carter, yet here again today. Hey, Zach. Hey there. Happy to be here. Yeah, happy yeah, to be here. Good. Well, I am excited to be here because I have a loop to throw for both me and you, is that I have received a question from a person who uh, views our videos. We always record this podcast. The videos are on our YouTube channel, Porn Brain Rewire. And I have sudden inspiration to answer people's questions, you know, and I try to do that, do that in the videos I make, but I think this is an awesome question. So I was hoping to just focus on this question today. How does that sound? Sounds great. Let's do it. It's a little impromptu, but mm -hmm. I think that's the fun part of our discussions. It Plus, I like it when we agree to disagree. So the question, which maybe there'll be some of that. The question for today is, what's the number one thing you can do to quit porn? So think about that for a minute. And I just want to let our listeners know that, you know, when I think about the questions, I'm always thinking about brain performance pattern how I can take a dysregulated, dysfunctional brain pattern and shift it into a regulated, neurologically regulated brain pattern, which allows for self-regulation, um, which then allows you to move forward with all your goals and to get on purpose in your life. So I'm going to talk about that most definitely in my answer, or we're going to dig into that once I come up with my answer. And Zach is really focusing on cognitive behavioral um, concepts and strategies. So we're going to ask you to dig into that. And then of course, we have not formulated it yet, but we will be formulating your brain hack strategy as we continue the discussion. So we're still going to go through our one, two, three. So would you like me to uh, throw out mine first, or would you like to take a stab at it, Zach? Sure, I'm happy. I'm happy to start, uh, okay, and then great. you can you can bounce. <laughs> off what and and like she said it's impromptu so usually i come with like notes prepped so uh <laughs> so here's i'm torn between two things but here's what i'll say so i spent years because my initial thought was probably blockers you know if you struggled with alcohol they tell you we'll keep the alcohol out of the house or if you struggle with eating they say keep the sweets out and so my initial gut was like, yeah, you get rid of technology you don't need, you set up blockers, you know, but I spent years doing that. And so I was trying to think of like, when, what was the thing that actually caused me the most growth the fastest? And I think attending group meetings was the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that because they do a lot of things. So one, you get accountability, you get information, you get mentorship, you find out about what are the best blocks in these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's, it's the, the, but the problem with it is it's really hard to get over the hump to, to do that, to reach out for help. But if you can do it, that is the easiest way. Once you get over the initial hump to make a ton of progress. Now I say that with the caveats. See, I was forced to say one thing today and <laughs> yeah. I still snuck in two, but even with that, what I, I, wanna... I have a feeling a third may be coming, right? Is there a third one in there? Too? <laughs> it's not, not exactly. <laughs> but I feel very constrained right now because I'm, I'm like yelling in my own head. So as the audience member, you can yell at me like, I tried blocks and it didn't work. I tried group meetings and it didn't work. It's like, right. Because it's complex and you have to do a bunch of things and I'm being forced uh -huh. to say one thing. Right. So, yes. yes. With that said, I would say number one thing is groups in addition to everything else you have to do. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Mine, as you're talking mine, I feel the same way. Like I feel the same way, but I mean, you know how I am too. I'm, I am super pragmatic, like obviously, cause we're going to talk about the pragmatics about this, but and again, this is a process that's not for the faint of heart, but I think it's the process that every person has to go through to get to become their authentic self. But I think the number one thing a person needs is that moment where they are internally motivated to figure this thing out. And so I'm gonna call it motivation and commitment and don't get me wrong, there's about 5,000 other things that once you have that moment, but without that moment, 
coming to you somewhere in this process. And you basically said it too. Like, and that was my first intuition. And then you said it, you're like, I tried blockers, but it didn't work. Then when you got to group, you were in a place where you were internally motivated to figure this out. And then of course, because the second thing I want to say is then once you get motivated and committed, you absolutely need all the proper tools, techniques, strategies, mentorship, and accountability. Like you can't, most people cannot do it without the pragmatic piece. But I've worked with a lot of people who will move through all the pragmatic pieces, but they're only, you know, anywhere between 25 and 75% committed. And I have worked with so many people that that commitment went from 25 to 100% in the middle of working with me in the 90 day program or with me personally. I'm thinking of one client off the top of my head. And I know I've talked about this a couple of times on the podcast lately, where on my intake paperwork, I asked for a person's commitment level one to 10. And like people will be in the brain map report of findings with me with a commitment level of three. And I'll even say to them, I see you got a solid three commitment level. Like, let's get started. But then a month later, they're like, I can't believe what I was thinking a month ago and how I think so differently now. And the last caveat to this is that like when you get internally motivated, wherever it is in the journey, your thought system changes. And that's why it matters, because the first thought system is Porn's not that bad for me. I just use it to relax. Like, is it really harming me or anybody else that much? That lady I heard on YouTube, she's totally nuts. Like, that's the thought system is like, I need it. Like, I'm not hurting anybody. Then your thought system shifts to maybe this isn't good for me. Or I'm wasting my time with this. Or I'm depleting my energy with this. And when you know that inside... There's no going back. You can trick yourself back into your old thought system here and there, like this is fine. But then when you're done, you inherently know this is not fine. And then you get this feeling inside. I'm not staying in this place anymore. I don't know what I need to do, but I know I need to figure it out. And I think that moment of internal motivation is what every person needs. And once you have that, it'll, it may take you five minutes. It may take you five years but you will get to the other side of it. Thoughts. So many. Um, <laughs> Cause like, I'm also trying to listen from a listener's perspective and like, I'm yelling in my head and I'm like, but I've been motivated. And then my motivation went away and it comes and goes. And here's kind of the thought processes that were happening in my head. It's like, yeah, I agree. So like the thing that pushed me to attend group meetings was I was, I was getting engaged Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'd been trying to get away from this stuff for years. And then that really kicked me in the butt. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I got to do this. And then once again, the listener says, well, what if you're single? Or what if I've already been married for years and I'm still in this? And here's kind of where my brain went. Because I was really kind of trying to solve all the problems that were coming up in my head. And what I came to was kind of like I was saying before, where I was so frustra frustrated by the question of like, what's the one thing? Uh -huh. And I'm like like building up and I'm like, but it's not just one thing. And like, exactly. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. what I, what I came to is even with the motivation, what is helpful? Cause I do agree to a lot of what you were saying, but I think what's helpful with the motivation is not just having one single thing that you're motivated by. And so where my brain went was there's a type of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy and in acceptance and commitment therapy, they heavily emphasize values. What are your values? And what you do is you like list out your values and then you prioritize the things that are most important to you. And so for some people, it may be, shoot, I got to fix this ED. Other people, my wife says she's going to leave me if I don't fix this. Other people, I want to get married and I don't want to have these problems. This is all good. But then in addition to that, it's hey, I can help somebody along the journey if somebody else is struggling with this. Or, hey, this is impacting my workplace. Hey, this is impacting my sports and my hobbies. Hey, and so like the more things that you begin to pay attention to that are being impacted by your porn use, by masturbation, the more you will be motivated. And so, yes, I agree, but I also have caveats. <laughs> 
Oh, totally. It's completely loaded. Like, you know, that's the <laughs> so danger loaded. of picking the one thing. And, you know, that's why in, in all the videos that I make, I, and I actually haven't been like hammering at home in a long time. And I was mm -hmm. thinking about this too. That's why I always tell people like the solution is to get on purpose in your life, in your work, your relationships and your hobbies. Like those are all the things that you value and that really are important at the end of the day. And I've also made videos about the moral incongruency because that's another really important factor. When you go, this doesn't fit into the person I think of myself as, but I have this behavior. When, when all of that stacks up, you have this moment where it's like, I'm not doing it anymore. And people can get really upset with themselves or really grieve. I always try to encourage people into more grief and being able to let that person, the old version of yourself go so that you can become the new version and, and have empathy and compassion for, even if it's the version of you from five minutes ago, where I've actually done a couple other things thinking about the last podcast that we've made. It's like nothing big, but like moments where I thought a thing was a good idea. And like a couple of minutes later, I'm like, well, where did that come from? And nobody else even notices, but they all become growth moments for me. It's like, whoa, what? why did that girl do that? But five minutes later, I can see it, which means I'm no longer her. So like, you know, all of those moments we can have. Um, but it really is every, every person who succeeds in recovery or in personal transformation, they have a moment or moments. So the motivation might happen over 50 different times. It might not be like one light bulb moment. It might be I'm motivated, I'm not so motivated. I'm motivated, I'm not so motivated. Then there comes a time where you throw your hands up and you're like, I'm done in this, in this phase of struggle of up, down, back, forth. And that's why, honestly, that's what I want people to avoid in the 90 day program. When you get into the 90 day program, you have a process that moves you through and the process helps you get and stay committed and to stay motivated over time because motivation can wax and wane. But when you double down on it, you're motivated towards something, not away. You're motivated toward the person that you want to be. But then, of course, you need all the tools and strategies and you, you pragmatically have to know how to do it. Yeah. And and as I'm listening to you, I'm like, do I want to change my answer? And I'm like, I don't know. But one of the things <laughs> one of the things that I was thinking about was, you know, when I when I do my assessments with clients because I, I keep saying this on, on the podcast and on your videos, and I'm going to keep saying it, which is porn's not your main problem. Mm -hmm. Masturbation's not your main problem. It's mm -hmm. all the stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why in the assessments, we dig in to what's going on underneath the surface. And so some people could argue that's the number one most important thing is like actually understanding what is actually going on mm -hmm. and understanding that, it's stress, it's boredom, it's loneliness, it's past trauma, it's hurt, it's all these other different things. And if you begin to see that like, your brain was trying to help you, the porn was trying to help you survive, your brain's number one purpose is to not die. Second right. main purpose, <laughs> don't get kicked out of the tribe, which right. means don't die. It's essentially yeah. <laughs> the same thing. And so that's where shame comes from. And so like, when you dig in, underneath the surface and you find out like, here are the things that porn was trying to help me with, that it was a great job at solving in the moment, but really was terrible at solving in the medium to long-term and actually ruined me in the medium to yeah, long-term. Yeah, but it also keeps you in survival mode too. Like what mm -hmm. I want for people and I'm doing it in my life, those are all the weird moments I have where I do a survival mm -hmm. thing and I'm like, you're in thrive mode, sister. Don't Go right. back to survival mode because you right. work so hard to get into thrive mode. Mm -hmm. Do not default to your old programming. Right. And, you know, when you do go to porn, it's just a survival mechanism. But what mm -hmm. you have to do is get yourself into thrival, as I call exactly. it. Exactly. And then allow yourself to stay there. Know you deserve it. Don't get sucked back into old mm -hmm. habits or old mm -hmm. conditioning, which it's difficult when you are conditioned for 30 years or whatever it might be to, to go to that default mechanism. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's like, you know, you have to anchor into thrival. I went to San, mm -hmm. Santa Fe, New Mexico um, with my in-laws. I told you this story a different time. We just got back and my brother-in-law was telling me a story of one of his best friends from high school about how he has become a really terrible 
alcoholic and um, whole story. And I was waiting for the rock bottom moment. And I'm like, oh, I really hope this guy is like now a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And that is not what happened. He unfortunately is in a nursing home at you know an age younger than 50 with wet brain because he's drank himself into such a terrible state. But the point of that story is he never got internally motivated. He his his wife left him. This is just one of a million stories, whether it be alcohol or porn, you know, like or drugs. Like this is one of a million stories that the the moment where you are and my husband even said out loud as my brother-in-law was telling us a story, he's like, he's heading towards rock bottom. Like, you know, we didn't know. I was hoping rock bottom was gonna lead up again. The only way you start leading up is you have to like be able to go inside. Like I'm using this thing to self-soothe. I'm using this thing to escape. What am I escaping? And how do I change that? And, you know, it goes back to what we talked about before. You have to feel it. You have to be able to think about it in a healthy way. And then you have to be able to act in new ways. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a really rock bottom dysregulated state, you're not in a position to do that. That's what coaching does. I'm actually thinking about one of my coaches who, when I, a long time ago, at the beginning of my difficult journey towards self, you know, realization and personal transformation, I yelled at that man, like a lot, you know, I'd be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's not true about me at all. And he had a whiteboard. He put all these things up. You do a lot of this. You need to start doing a lot of that. And I do, I would take pictures of it. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know what you're telling me right now. But now I look back at that. I'm like, wow. And I've told him this over years. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and think about me. Like, I'm, I'm more educated in this stuff than most people. I but this wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of my life. Like, you know, it was probably like 10 years ago. And it was more about like, you know, just all my past programming. And he could see it from a different angle because he wasn't programmed like me. Mm -hmm. And he actually was a recovering alcoholic who doesn't drink at all and anymore. And he had his own rock bottom moment where he was rock bottom and he came up. So he knows that feeling and he know, he could see me in my rock bottom moment with no self-awareness of how I got myself there. Mm -hmm. And he was able to look at me and go, listen, these are all the things that got you there. These are all the things that are going to get you out. And I'm like, take a picture, <laughs> take a picture. Like that does not relate. I don't understand. But then of course I started doing those things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, okay, stop doing the things in the left column, start doing the things in the right column. Mm -hmm. And with every action step, I began to grow and to change and come out of survival the way I was programmed move into new programming and continually reprogram myself day after day after day with other people's help. Wait, you mean it didn't happen all at once and that you have to work <laughs> at it over time? Is that what you're saying? That there's that's not exactly one thing it. that's going to fix well, it? it? But in there, I did have the moment where I'm like, I'm not going back. I don't care how hard this is. Mm. Like there was a moment in there. I'm like, I know all this stuff I don't know, but I know one thing for sure. I'm not going back to what I had. Never. I'm never going back. But I think for me in my journey, that probably took, oh, well, you know, it was brewing over time, but it probably took two years of working with someone, mm. not five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I love your survive versus thrive, you know, and you know, what the scientific community calls is, is it sounds like maladaptive and adaptive. And for those that's that exactly don't... what Matt said. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so um, these are what... maladaptive and I'm totally into, I'm super smart. You know, I'm like, please explain to me what you mean by maladaptive. <laughs> He's well, like, they used yeah. to serve you, but they don't serve you any longer. And I'm writing that down. Like, <laughs> Sure. Well, in and, and I so the what I've read as far as the definitions that I like is maladaptive is essentially numbs you out in the moment and adaptive is actual personal growth and actually solving the underlying problems. Um, it's approaching because, and engaging or, you know, actually, yeah. I like, you know, how I read Will Smith's book and I've talked about this on the podcast mm. before. He tells a story of 
where, you know, he, it's an analogy. It's just some story where, you know, there's a person who needs to get across a river. And so they blow up the boat and they have a big boat and the boat takes them across the river. And then the next thing is a jungle. So the boat got them across the river, but they cannot get the boat through the jungle, but they don't want to give it up because it's the thing that helped them get across the river. Mm. But now they're in a jungle and it keeps getting stuck in the trees and it's holding them back. Mm. So they have to give up. Like it was adaptive, even though it might've been unhealthy, it yeah. worked for a time, but it in doesn't work. It did. It worked it for the moment and for that, yeah. for that, you know, season of life, even, you know, like mm. if you're a kiddo and you're being bullied and your parents are arguing all the time and this is the unhealthy escape. Mm -hmm. It's, it worked for you, even though it wasn't healthy, it was maladaptive, you know, and then mm -hmm. now you don't even need it because you're an adult. You can go do lots of healthy things to emotionally right. regulate. Right. And I think understanding that I feel like we're jumping around a little bit. So sorry, everyone, if we're jumping around a little yeah, bit, no. I think like, I think like, understanding your story and understanding how your brain works and that like here's this thing that like it helped you sur to survive for a bit helps to add a little bit of empathy because if this is purely shame i know you've talked about the shame cycle over and over and over and over that kind of helps to disconnect the shame just a little bit so that you understand like hey i don't want to do this anymore but like this was the thing that solved a lot of problems for me for a long time and now i have better healthier ways to go about mm -hmm. making myself feel better when life gets hard. Yeah. And I think that's where the motivation piece comes in. So mm -hmm. just to move to number two, and then I don't know, I'll cue you up if you have a cognitive behavioral technique sure. or sure. story, mm -hmm. and then we'll move to the brain hack strategy, but just to move to number two on brain performance pattern behind this stuff. When you're in survival mode, before you make that motive, that internal motivation decision, even if the motivation waxes and wanes over a year and you're in that process before that you're in what I call strained brain, your brain's using too much fast energy, too much slow energy. It keeps you exhausted. It keeps you stressed out. It keeps you in survival. That survival brain pattern can't make it into thrival with you to get into thrival. You have to bring those extreme brain speeds into the middle of calm focus. And, you know, in neurofeedback today, I've had a lot of neurofeedback coaching sessions and I can see people's brains change in the data that I have. And the coolest thing is like, you know, it's people will say, you know, I'm not quite sure how much, cause I always say, how's your brain doing? And they're like, I'm not quite sure, but you know, this is changing for me. I'm feeling calmer. I'm feeling more motivated. That's the beginning of it because your as your brain regulates, you have greater ability to emotionally regulate and self-regulate. It's necessary for you to regulate your brain to be self-regulated and to emotionally regulate in healthy ways. So you come out of strained brain and you get into flow or calm focus, and then you're able to move forward in the process. So number three, cognitive behavioral strategies. Any thoughts for us or just one, um, you know, one little ditty there on how to, you know, in terms of cognitive behavioral, what we're talking about is that underlying thought system. It's a distorted one. And that motivational moment for me is where you realize the old thought system distorted. The new thought system of purpose and relationship and healthy work and, and hobbies, that's what we want people to be able to get motivated towards, moving towards the authentic version of themselves that they want to be. Yes, I have something, I think. <laughs> Just remember, everyone, she she made me do this on the yes, spot. Yes, ex exactly. <laughs> Come on, it's so fun. Don't it is fun. It? it is. I'm getting I'm getting put on the spot. OK, so here here are the questions that I would say. I would ask myself, so I have two questions mm -hmm. if I were if I were you, the listener. And Dr. Lee talks about getting out the journal. Here you go. Another thing. Mm -hmm. Pop out the journal. Okay. Write this down. OK. What does this activity do for me? So I think we assume that porn doesn't do anything for us. It's just completely destructive. While that is mainly true, it is not 100% true, okay? Pornography, if you, if you watch a war movie and someone is running on a battlefield and they get shot in the shoulder, 
you see the paramedic, the, the medics come out, they get called, they come out and they take a little stem thing and they stick it in their shoulder so that they no longer feel that pain. Did the stem solve the problem of the bullet in the shoulder? No, it numbed the guy out so that they could then take him to the hospital tent to then remove the bullet and seal him up. Pornography is that numbing stent. So it did something for you for a time, but it's not solving the problem. Bro, you're bleeding out right now emotionally. You need to actually deal with the bullet. And so you ask yourself, what does this activity do for me? Does it numb me out when I'm lonely? Does it numb me out when I'm stressed? Does it make me feel like I'm cared about if I feel like I'm unlovable? You ask yourself, what does this activity actually do for me? That's question number one. Question number two, how can that I meet that need in a healthier way? Question number two is how can I meet that need in a healthier way? And so on paper, it's simple. In practice, it's hard. If you're lonely, you find friends. If you don't know how to do that, that's why we have coaching programs. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Where if, you get to yell at your coach that it makes no sense until it does. You can yell at me and I'll yell back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Until it clicks and you're like, remember when I yelled at you three weeks ago? I'm sorry about that. But I do yeah. it out of love. So mm -hmm. if the problem is stress, okay, how can you actually solve the stress? If it's boredom, if it's lack of meaning, once again, if you don't know how to actually answer that question, that is what we do here. We help you walk through those processes to solve the actual underlying issues. So those are yeah, the two things. I love it. I love yeah. it. And I just want to repoint out from my own story that at that moment, self-awareness can be really, really low. Even if you're a smart person, even if you're successful, even if, you know, the reason you're using it, like, you know, it can be very challenging to see when you're still wrapped up in the strain brain cycle. Remember, your brain is in strain brain. Strain brain does not get to the right answers in quiet moments. It doesn't get to the healthy mode. You have to move towards the healthy mode. And all of this works together synergistically. Um, okay, so I'm going to put a bow on that. And we're going to say that your brain hack strategies for the day are Two, figure out your motivators, figure out who you want to be and where the incongruencies are. And I love that you can go online, find a values exercise. There's lots of websites that you can use to see what your values are. I've learned about myself. Honesty, integrity is the number one value there. I can, I can let other things go. If you're dishonest with me, we got a major problem <laughs> and, and, you know, you have to have internal integrity, people who don't have integrity. And that has developed in me over many, many years. I, I actually think when I was younger, like I don't come from breeding of integrity and not that my family is disintegritous. Is that a word? Not, it should be. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably not, but it sounds oh, great. But know. you know, it wasn't something. And I've told a story on here before when we had five babies and I came out of Toys R Us, which I think is closed now. And they accidentally gave me a case of diapers for free. And I'm like, guys, check this out, man free case of diapers. They're like $50, you know, and we didn't have, he's like, get back in there. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. The universe just served me this free case of diapers. Like, nope. So I walk back in, my husband has a lot of integrity. I walk back in and I'm like, you, you didn't charge me for these diapers. The girl's looking at me like, what are you talking about? But like that has become very important over time. So go online, do a values exercise because you'll see that porn does not compute with your top values. So it's, it's definitely going to create some friction there, which might move you towards that motivation point. Once you're motivated, it's very difficult for this, for people to do this alone. And that goes to Zach's point where in our programs and our 90 day program, it's self-guided, self-paced. You can dig in by yourself. You don't ever have to talk to us if you don't want to. Of course, we both want to meet you. So in the 90 day program, you get a complimentary coaching call with Zach. I run monthly meetings where we're on a meeting and we can discuss these questions. You, you can send me your questions 24 hours in advance and I answer them in those meetings. On top of that, if you do need help in the 90 day program, that's why Zach offers coaching. Even if you don't want to be in the 90 day program, you get personalized responsive 
and obviously really good answers because Zach was able to come up with really beautiful examples and answers here today, which is part of the fun. But you get to see this man can think on his toes in response to what you need. We're trying to meet people with what they need to be able to move through this once you're motivated and you need the proper tools, techniques, strategies. Everything we do here is built on science. And if you are internally motivated, we'll be able to help you through this process to your desired goals at the end. So another action step is get into a program. If, if you are motivated, if you're staying in that space of struggle, the one I told you I don't want you to stay in, the one I stayed in for two tragic years of trying to get myself, you know, of course I thought I could do it myself. And I'm like, oh, maybe you can't. And then I was able to move through that process of getting, that's why I've been in every single, basically every single group that's out there or any, you know, my daughter said it, you love programs. Like, yes, I do. <laughs> that's why I offer them because they help. So get into, into the program and then use Zach's strategies that he's talking about here to be able to look at what need, look at the underlying need. If you can get there, if you're self-aware enough, what is the need that's being served? And I just recorded a podcast a few weeks ago on unhealthy needs and healthy needs. And I, I gave you an exercise in that podcast episode. Look and what is the, what's, is it a healthier and unhealthy need? Is it being served in an, a healthier and unhealthy way? Clearly if it's porn and it's unhealthy, move yourself through that process. And if you need help, reach out. Uh, any thoughts to wrap it up? Yeah, just in agreement with what what you said. It's it's when you have other people to bounce off what you're going through. It's very different than trying to do it by yourself. And so I agree wholeheartedly that especially if you're in this by yourself and you're like, I tried the thing Zach said and I can't figure it out. It's like, yeah, you, you might need some help. Not because you're stupid, not because you're bad at this, but because sometimes you need a person on the other end that like can pick up on things that you can't see yourself. And um, that's why I do assessments. That's why I do coaching. That's why we do these podcasts, right? Is, is to have people that you have access to that can help you move through this. That's why we do it. Cause we're passionate about it. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Awesome. So one, one last thought, do we, um do we want to talk about upcoming additions to the 90 day program? Oh yeah, please do. Please do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just so everybody knows coming up here soon, if you get the 90 day program or if you already have it, I'm going to start uh, doing uh, coaching calls once a week. If you have uh, the 90 day program or porn brain rewire, either yeah. one or quick and, porn uh, for good is actually the smaller program, good. but mm -hmm. um, you know, that program is introductory. So if you've been here on the podcast, it's not the right program for you because it really is for people who need to have the aha moment that porn's not mm -hmm. a, a great idea for you. If you've already had at least the notion and then you've been trying, you really need the 90 day program. So mainly the 90 day program. So mm -hmm. I, I, now is a good time. I'm not going to be doing these free coaching meetings for everybody uh, for an extended period of time. We don't have an exact time frame of how long it's going to last, but it's not going to be super long. So yeah, it's brain, it's brain health month in the United mm -hmm. States. So Zach has graciously offered to ramp up the coaching in the 90 day program. So this way, if you're inspired, now's the time because you're going to mm -hmm. get weekly coaching also on top of the monthly coaching call meeting with me. So there's lots of support in there. It's a perfect time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be awesome. So I, 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 if you don't have the 90 day program yet, literally now is the time to do it so that you can get this and it's, it's no additional charge. And so yeah. it's going to be awesome and you're going to love it. Yeah, definitely. I love that. That's a really good point because we're doing it so that the people in the 90 day program get more support because of this idea. And Zach's offered to do it because he's just told you getting in a group was one of the most powerful things for him. So mm -hmm. he's in the same air of that he's offered to provide the group for the 90 day program. And, you know, my monthly meeting is designed to do that, but it's once a month. And there tends to be a lot of people in it because it is once a month. So in monthly in weekly coaching, it's going to be more often, obviously, and just inherently there'll be less people because it is more often. So you can get more personalized support. So it's a great, great thought. Brain health month. It's we're on a mission to help you heal your brain and create the life that you want. All right, cool. Until next time, please, somebody send us a question. 
that we will disagree about because we haven't disagreed in a long time. I forget the last time where we were like, I don't know about that. So let's get some dis uh, agree to disagree and look at some dis different angles. Anybody has a great question, send it to yeah. me because it'll no be politics. For, yeah, no politics for sure. <laughs> I, I I'll be like a deer in the headlights because I just don't know <laughs> enough about politics. Nor do I. My husband tries to get me to debate politics with him. I look and I'm like, <laughs> no. all I tell him is unless we're getting a sign and we're <laughs> we're hitting into the streets on that agenda, I don't want to talk about it. So. <laughs> All right. So until next time, control your brain or it'll control you. We'll see you next week.